Hi, kitty cats. I am Amethyst Herrick, your hostess for Gender Identity Weekly, a weekly discussion about identity and gender from the contributors and guests of the Purple Pop publications website, Gender Identity Today. This content is brought to you by subscribers of Gender Identity Today. If you are already a subscriber, thank you very much for your support. And if you would like to support shows just like this one, as well as other content, other podcasts, other writing by our contributors, please consider subscribing using the links you're going to find in the show notes. So today I'm speaking, <laughs> I'm speaking, today I'm speaking with Mona Lazar. First of all, Mona, thank you so much for agreeing to talk to me. Um, I am a big fan of your work, so thank you. Um, let's see. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you so much, Amy, and hello you, and hello Amy's kitty cats, and I'm really happy to <laughs> right. be here. Thank you. So Mona is a writer and an artist. Um, I know you through Medium and Substack, mm -hmm. and much of what I've seen has been relationship and, and sex related and, and sexuality related, some gender, um, and I saw, I think it was maybe in your bio on Medium, where you said in particular a relationship coach, or maybe it isn't about me, I don't recall. Yeah. Um, so I want to start there. I mean, first of all, how do you, like, what, what is a, how does, what is a relationship coach? And how, how do you, what, what does this entail? Um, so a relationship coach is like the little sister of a therapist. Um, okay. You can, you can become a relationship coach coach if you have like a neck for relationships and understanding human nature and understanding mm. how relationships between people function and um there there are a lot of ways you can become a relationship coach like you can actually go to college but that, that would be psychology or even psychiatry but some people um, choose to do this part and um, you can get specialized in um, couple um, therapy or basically in relationships between people. It can I be see. romantic ones, it can be you can assist companies with team, team buildings or uh, there are you know everything that can be relationship can be sure. approached by a relationship coach. And uh, okay. since okay. it's one of our biggest problems <laughs> that we don't know how to interact with with each other, you know, in a healthy way, that's where I come in. Right. No, I thank you. I appreciate that uh, that um, the introduction to it. Actually, I was, you know, I mentioned also an artist because I looked. You have an Etsy page, actually. I do. With your paintings on it. Yes. I had no idea. Are we looking at some in the background, by the way? Yes. I, apart from my Etsy page, I have this wall behind me with uh, <laughs> my right. Painting. Yes. <laughs> it's a it's a showroom. It's the showroom. I it's, got it. Yeah. I was it's actually my well, living room, which is also a showroom. <laughs> it's perfect. I was surprised by that. In fact, actually, just you know, to fangirl for a moment, because forgive me on this, but. There was one article or maybe, maybe it was an interview you did. I'm trying to remember what it was, but you said you'd only been writing for like a year. It was like 2023 that you started? I started in, yes, uh, no, wait a minute. In 2022. Oh, okay. In March 2022. So okay. by now it's almost two years. Yeah. Now in April, in April, it will be two years. Yes. Okay. Because, I mean, you know, the the body of work you have, you know, not to go off too much. I mean, there, you write some fascinating stories and, and, and that's, you know, in part, well, sure. I mean, it's in part why I wanted to talk to you. Um, you know that the, I mean, we're talking on Gender Identity Weekly. So, I mean, much of what I talk about is identity and then there's gender in there and then more recently you know Oceana had a great Oceana and I had a good conversation about um gender and the relationship to sexuality and then there was a little bit of sex thrown in there and you had an article that I read I think it's from September of 23 
mm-hmm. that brought everything together just beautifully. It was all the, and then all the women wanted to be lesbians is the title. I, Myself I don't want to, <laughs> <laughs> Right. So I don't, I'm like, I'm going to murder the story if I try to tell it. Do you, do you mind telling, you know, like what was the prompt for that story? Because yeah. for that particular article, be, because there's so much to be, to be taken from it. Um, Go ahead. What was the prompt for that? Yeah, so there was this, um, it, it happened recently. So it happened uh, in, I think it was in September that it happened. Um, okay. A friend of mine uh, took me, it was Sunday morning, and uh, she took me to a Pride event. Uh, but it was actually in a bookshop. And uh, it was like, at 7.30 in the morning, and there was like a pajama party, a, a pride pajama party at 7.30 uh, Sunday morning. And I was like, what is, <laughs> you know, that's when people sleep. Yes. <laughs> Uh, so And, and for, forgive gonna, me for the interruption. Yeah. I, you, are, you are not, you are actually not a lesbian, right? I mean. No, sadly you can always change. I mean, there's no, I, I tried. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, mean, uh, I didn't I, mean I, for that to turn into like a, like a moment of, Oh, just did. Sorry. <laughs> I'm one of those, um, what do you call them? Wait a second. Uh, I, I'm an uh, involuntary heterosexual. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It, it could yeah. be, it's worse. There could be worse. It could be worse. You could be involuntarily celibate. <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, it could be worse. Yeah. So. But I'm uh, voluntarily celibate. <laughs> okay. Okay. So um, it was like really early in the morning and she said, let's go to this pride thing. And I was thinking, what are we doing there? Neither one of us is gay. Uh, it's really early in the morning. We don't have sure. pajamas. We... I was low-key hoping she would say, you know what, I don't feel like it anymore, but she didn't. So mm-hmm. I had to go. <laughs> and I went there, and it was one of the most beautiful and heartfelt things ever, but also kind of painful uh, because it was... Um, so there's this um, actress that we have in the city where I live and um, mm-hmm. with her initial partner, like she's bisexual. We didn't know that at the time, but she had a partner for a long time, male partner. And um, they started this theater that is really well known now and really famous and really loved in the whole country. And uh, they started this theater together. He was also an actor. She was an actress. And there was this amazing story, a successful artist and business story, and also love story. And it was just beautiful. And then um, she told us how, like, you know, a lot of love stories end at some point, no matter how big the love is. And um, she's still acting. Um, but now she found a new love and the new love was present and the new love, um, is a woman. And we were all like, oh my God. So there's this, this is what the pride thing was all about because she was there. Sure. Yeah. She was there telling us about pride from several, several perspectives, but also telling as her transition from this really long relationship with a man into this newfound love after 40 years old um, with a woman. And apparently it was something she always wanted to try because she always knew she was bisexual, but nobody wanted to try it with her. So she she tried it with some people, but they were like, no, 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 we're we're not doing this. But involuntarily heterosexual as well, maybe. (laughs) Yes. But um, finally she found this um, new great love and it was amazing to see her. Like she's, she's one of those very powerful women. Um, 
like you can tell she's a boss you can tell she's a person who started a business and made it successful and she has that ceo energy although she's an actress and although um she's like that she kept returning again and again to her love for this woman in her life and um her partner being there she was like she was sort of honored by all this um new love that was made public and at some point she the partner started tearing up and the whole audience we were like most of us were heterosexual women there <laughs> we were like oh my god like we I, i'm not sure we ever felt this like we've been in love before but we've been through a lot of crap and sure. none of us because we talked after the the event we talked between us and we were all like i'm not sure we felt this and had it reciprocated by somebody like she had it reciprocated at that very moment by this person who was there in the audience with her yeah and the best moment for me and for other people from just looking at them was uh that she said she also said i never had this with a man um and um the level of empathy that i feel in this relationship I've never felt it for any man and they never felt it for me although we loved each other and she said when she falls I fall it was like yeah Damn. when I fell nobody fell for me when they sure. fell I fell yeah so, I, I, I want this everybody wanted this uh and uh then at some point she also said that after this relationship she could not um imagine herself um having like being with a man again and mm -hmm. like especially uh, sexually she couldn't imagine being sexually with a man and i thought damn I can't imagine being any other way with them. What are we doing here? Sure, sure. <laughs> yeah. uh, and it was one of those moments for probably all of us women in the audience when we thought we are doing it wrong or maybe we're not choosing the right people. because it just cannot be that can we all are we all doing it wrong or is this a mismatch of what we want and what they want and then i wrote the article the next day and i got a lot of hate for it <laughs> i'm amazed well yeah maybe i'm not that amazed you got hate for it <laughs> i mean i want i want to <laughs> The the first question I want to ask on that. And I have my own opinion, but do do you just everybody becoming lesbian is is that or every woman, sorry, becoming a lesbian is that the answer? No, obviously not. And it like it wasn't about that because I had this disclaimer at the end of the article because I did realize what I was saying here and mm -hmm. I did realize it's not the answer to anything and unless you're a lesbian it's I mean, it's useless. <laughs> it's, you're not just going to become one just because it seems in some fantasy that it would be better to be one. It was sure. more like it it wasn't so much about being a lesbian as it was a need for something that a lot of women are not getting from men sure and i had a disclaimer at the end of the article it didn't work because everybody um <laughs> thought that um you know i'm taking something like these were the things that i'm you had you already had everything and now you want to take something away from gay women and etc i was not sure i get it and i don't i don't think uh, becoming a lesbian if you could do that 
I don't think is the answer to anything. And it wasn't about that. It was just mm -hmm. seeing somebody receiving what we all wanted throughout our life yes. and receiving it in a certain context. And of yes. course, for a second, anybody would have thought, if only I were a lesbian, mm -hmm. <laughs> this, this could work out. Right. Obviously, that's just the first thought and anybody knows it doesn't work that way. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting. I don't know. There's so much, so much to say about that. I mean, I had a conversation. I would not have had this, this thought if I had not had a conversation after I read your article. It was a conversation I had a couple of weeks ago um, with a friend of mine named Lisa, actually. It was, it was on this podcast. And she said, it, I had told her, let me try to frame this story a little better. She is a photographer. And I did a photo shoot with her. And it was the first time in my life that I had felt, well, beautiful is the way I thought it, and comfortable. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, felt, I felt seen and I felt recognized. Yes. And what's interesting is, like, it went through the phone. She wasn't there. She, it was an app on the phone through which she took photographs. Like, I had her voice just in the she was the you know she put it this disembodied voice but she was in her words she reflected what it was i was expressing and i saw myself in her eyes and and yeah. it was beautiful is is that is that along the lines of what you, what you think you experienced at this pajama yes, practice definitely along the lines Yes, definitely along the lines of empathy and maybe feeling the same way, understanding the same things. And yes, feel, feeling seen and heard and understood rather than fixed and guided. And, mm. you know, the, those points where we just don't come together because we don't match because we've been trained differently. Not that we couldn't. I, I absolutely think men and women could have good relationships together if they retrain what they've been trained. Like each of us being trained for different roles, which are no longer yes. necessary and are ruining everything around them now. Okay. Okay. I hear, I understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm. That, that, men are trained to be the leader in a relationship, say, yes. as opposed to, well, ref reflective, I think is, yes. you know, yes. it, there's, there's, I don't want this to turn into a big man bashing thing. Cause that Why not? was, <laughs> well, I mean, you know, you would even said, you know, the, 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 the answer is not that you have to become a lesbian. No. The answer is to is to try to try to change your relationships so so that there so that there is a mutual reflection, which is well, I mean you didn't say it like that, but I you know I'm I'm extrapolating. I mean I think ultimately being able to see because I you know what I read in your article was that the new partner saw the actress. Wait, could. I'm saying that wrong. The actress was able to see herself through the new partner's eyes, through the woman's mm -hmm. eyes. And it was a different experience for her because she mm -hmm. had not felt seen. And, yes. and so that's why I'm, that's why I extrapolated to say that, you know, it, it's not becoming a lesbian. It's being able to figure out, you know, how do you, how do you have a relationship where, where you, you, you know, can show the other person who he or she is. So, I'm trying to figure out where to go from there. Other, <laughs> I mean, do you, you know, I actually thought, and, and apparently I was wrong. I thought actually the two women were not still together. I had misunderstood that. No, no. You're telling the story. Okay. <clears throat> out of curiosity, and, and this is way off topic, but if, out of curiosity, like what happened to the guy? Is he pretty, 
is he pretty pissed off at this point? Is he? Uh, her former partner. Um, yes, I don't know I'm if sorry. he's pissed off, but uh, he's around anyway. Like they they have the theater together and they have the business together, and okay, uh, it was um, it was a long relationship. And at some point, like it's the long relationship ended before she started the new relationship with um, this other woman. Um, it's possible that he's pissed off. Like I know him; he looks pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> but could it, could it just be that masculine? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, stuff, That's dude. exactly what he looks like. <laughs> I had some practice for the first 52 <laughs> years of looking pissed off. This is what you, you know, it's part of what you do. <laughs> you don't want to look nurturing and receptive. It's part, I mean, you had said these are roles That's we get trained. Bit. Yeah. Oh, I know. Uh, right. Because then maybe you could have a good relationship or something, yeah. which, why would you and want that? You know, I can't God, forbid, come up with God forbid, as a woman, you could look angry because... That would make you very unfeminine. And <laughs> oh, right. Right. Absolutely, absolutely horrid, you know, to, to yes. express true feelings, you know, either as yeah. a man or as a woman. Um, I'm, so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm curious, like I want, <laughs> I'm, I'm curious, like, what do you, how do you develop any of this? I mean, I'm trying, I'm not even sure the question I want to ask this relationship was different because the two reflected each other. Ultimately, I think is, is probably the big, the big thing there is that the two reflected each other, but why don't, so why, why don't we do that? Why can't we do that? Maybe that's the better question. Why can't we? We can, we just don't know how to, um, like, of course, women know how to better than men just because they had, years of training okay. and because the, like they were trained for relationships men however still need to learn like it's it's really not their fault that they're in this uh, um, point today where society modern society is has come to this point where we all need to learn everything that the others know so we can be, you know, successful and good at relationships and develop soft skills and everything. Yeah. So we kind of, now we need to learn to understand each other and come towards each other and learn what the other guys know. And there will be a gap before that happens. I'm sure it will happen, like, unless we're heading for... Extinction, extinction or something that's something else <laughs> not the subject of today but unless that happens i believe with all my heart that we're going that way uh, but before we get there all these transition periods are very difficult and it's going to be a difficult time for a few generation generations mm -hmm. two three and um People will, the way I see it, and it's already happening, women will turn away from men and they will go their own way. And men will do the same for a while until we learn what the others want and how we can meet in the middle. I see. I have a theory on why that would need to happen. Let's hear it. Thank you for the prompt. I'm glad if you had gone, I don't really care. Uh, I got a thing to do. I don't. <laughs> I have nothing to do. It's 9.29 <laughs> p.m. here, so we're good. <laughs> oh, jeez. My, th my theory on this, maybe good, maybe bad. My theory on this, because I talk about identity I mean, everything I do is about identity, and I've tried to think about how do we do we discover our identity or do we develop it? And my sense is when we when we get ourselves reflected back to ourselves, 
I think that's what I wanted to say. When when we're reflected back, um, we 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 learn things about ourselves that we didn't know before. Um, I'm I'm curious. You know, like I don't know how much you've spoken, you know, with the actress, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm curious if. She's learned a lot about herself from this relationship. And I don't mean necessarily about sexuality or, or gender, but just who she is as a person, you know, who, what, what motivations she has, what desires she have, she has, um, you had brought up social expectations. And, and I think much of what we do is please social expectations. We don't go inside mm -hmm. and say, well, who am I first before I enter into a relationship? What do I bring to it? Who am I? Um, which is a pretty open-ended question, obviously. Who am I? But I wonder if that's the first step. First to, to say, well, social expectations are great, and I'm going to discard those for now because I need to know who I am before I, before I, can, I can have a, a valid, a, a, a healthy relationship. Mm -hmm. Do you have a thought? Any thoughts? Yes, plenty. Uh, <laughs> so, <clears throat> about the, to answer like the first part of the question about the, the actress and what she found, um, she definitely found another side <clears throat> to herself in this relationship, like a softer side, a more relaxed side, because, mm -hmm. like. A side that was probably already in her, it just didn't have a chance to come out because nobody right. was there to embrace it and to let it be and to not criticize it or fix it or whatever. Mm -hmm. But now that she had this love and somebody to be there for her, she indeed, she found herself giving herself permission to just breathe. Yes. So such a perfect phrase there. Mm. It's giving herself permission. Yes. And that's where yes. the social expectations come in. They are it's like, pressures. There are I'm a lot sorry, of pressures. Ahead. And uh, these pressures are not just from society, because even our partners can put a lot of pressure on us to be a certain way. Um, yeah. And that's like, you know, it happens. We all have expectations from others to be a certain way and from ourselves to be a certain right. way. But right. ideally when you go home and you're with your partner, what you want is to just relax and be as much of, of yourself as it's humanly possible and socially acceptable. Right. And a lot of times we don't get that even at home. Some people never get that. Uh, their whole life. And that's a, a really sad part of our experience. And mm -hmm. some um, choose to get that no matter what, because at some point they figure out it's more important than anything else. But though, right. there aren't many of those. Like, there are more and more, but still not a lot, because one of our mm -hmm. most basic needs is to be part of society. And, you know, I keep, I keep mentioning, I think I said this in at least 20 articles that <laughs> when there's such a huge need to be integrated in society that was left from when we were part of tribes. And that was our only way of survival if the tribe left us somewhere outside, like in the cold. <clears throat> We would die. We would be eaten by wild animals. Like yeah. our very existence depended on being part of the tribe and playing nice, so they would accept us. And that stayed with us. That it doesn't change just because oh. you know social conditions sure. have changed. Sure. You, you know, you you use the phrase. There are two things I want to follow up on. You use the phrase "being yourself," <clears throat> and I think. In part, that's difficult. It's difficult to go be yourself when you don't know who that is. Yes. I mean, and yeah. I, you know, it, I think it took this actress, or it seems like it took this actress, a, a, 
a different relationship, first of all, just to enable seeing that. Go ahead. You you had something you were going to say. I'm sorry. Well, yes, absolutely. This um, being yourself thing and just be yourself. And uh, there are so many... There are, a lot has been written and talked about being yourself thing, this being yourself thing, but uh, how do you reach who you are? It's tough. <laughs> and, and, yes. And um, most people never get there to exactly who they are. How can you, you find that? Like you can mm -hmm. find parts of yourself see if those parts of yourself are really who you are or again some programming from your childhood or some social conditioning or whatever it could be but right. you have to see what works for you and decide that today and maybe this year this is who i am and that could change next year because i might discover some new things about myself or i could discover i I, I, I fit better somewhere else. And this being yourself can change throughout the years. It doesn't have to be like, I'm born this way and this is who I am. It's, it doesn't work that way. Right. <clears throat> no, I, I've, I've written the same for what it's worth, you know, that identity is a process. Yes, absolutely. It, it doesn't end. You don't get to like some point you go, oh, well, okay, now I know myself. I, I guess I can stop. No. You know, it, society <laughs> always moves ending? on. No, because society yeah. isn't. You're, you're, as long as you are, exist inside a society, you're going to have to continue to... I mean, I consider it a negotiation with your social environment and mm -hmm. the person you know you are. Um, I mean, not a an explicit one, that you go to zero, you go like the council or something. Is it okay if I wear white after Labor Day or something? They go, what? Yeah. No. No, well, you can't do that. Um, lost my own train of thought. Uh, oh, so it's a, pro it's a process, though, you know, that it's an ongoing, you know, what safety do I have in my social environment? And that was the second point I wanted to follow up on because you bring up tribes first gave us a sense of safety absolutely and it's in it's interesting that now we have to consider our safety even within the tribe um i wrote an article and we don't have to go really nuts on this but i wrote an article about i think tribes societies ultimately that were capable of embracing Ultimately, I, I, I brought it down to like the LGBTQ community, tribes that mm -hmm. were capable of of embracing people with capable of, of um, sorry, capable of embracing people who expressed outside of standard social roles had evolutionary advantages. I hope that came out right. Let me say it again, just in case. Okay. Societies that were capable of embracing people who existed outside the traditional roles mm -hmm. had more ability to, to survive. That, that there are, that by having social roles initially provided a method of survival, but by embracing changing social roles, there's a greater chance of survival. Um, I think that was all I was going to say, but um, go ahead. I think there's a thought brewing. I'm going to stop talking. Yes, <laughs> there is a thought brewing. I was thinking that that's, um, I don't know. Maybe you're referring to a specific example, like maybe there were some tribes who did exactly this. And you have some specific example, historical example in mind. Uh, but that's that makes a lot of sense even from a psychological point of view because if you are very rigid in your roles and in what in, in your identity even in your personal identity whatever is very rigid is going to break at some point yes no nobody right. can wait can walk this very narrow path where we can be 
if I'm a woman, I can be just entirely feminine and entirely soft, which is absolute bullshit, by the way. <laughs> I just wrote an article about how we're not that way. <laughs> so these very narrow paths, um, no matter who imposes them, they never lead to anything good. They can be useful for a short time, like when you're in survival mode, even individually or as a society. Mm -hmm. We are going to uh, do this in some push-pull emergency mode, like we can only do this, extreme discipline, only this, but we can do it for a limited time. And then we have to have the personal freedom and be be given the freedom to try other methods of being and other roles that will build that society and that will build ourselves. Yes. Otherwise, yes. it's just going to fail. It, it will break under the pressure of its own rules and regulations if it's, it, it's just too much. You didn't really ask the question, but but the the I sort of had an example of of a society, um, you know that that would that would um, value other gender roles, and it's a weird one too because you know I've read I've read I've read a lot of history of Celtic tribes. Mm -hmm. Mostly is what I've read is, Kel is history of Celtic tribes, some some actually, um, you know, Indian uh, Indian tribes. And, you know, there's the idea of proto-Indo-European culture, that, that it was a sort of a singular culture that, that ended up sort of being localized in the Celts. And then the Romans came in and said, look, we can't have actual culture, so we're going to screw everything up. Um, sorry, Romans out there. I didn't mean to... There's not you in particular, Romans, just, you know. Are you there. insulting the Roman Empire? <laughs> what? No. <laughs> yes. So. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Somebody, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> sure. But in, there are, there, in Celtic societies, there were people, um, like a great example was the, the blacksmith. You know, if you were going to have... Um, if you were going to have uh, people, you know, your tribe going out to war, you you needed, you know, to some sort of battle. You needed weapons and weapons break and weapons get, uh, you know, dull. I've never been in a battle, believe it or not. Um, so I don't really know everything that happens, but but weapons get messed up. And so you have the blacksmith, who's probably a burly person, right? This is a guy with a hammer. Yeah, I'm right. left handed. Maybe he's right handed. But, you know, it's like. <laughs> big ass hammer and the fire and whatever else you do as a blacksmith. I don't know, but he stayed behind. You didn't have that guy fight. You also right. didn't have like the baker, that person, you know, somebody who ground all the grain, which is again, a very um, manual process. Mm -hmm. You didn't have those people go out because you needed to feed the people who were fighting. This was a really long winded way just to say that, um, those tribes, the tribes that were able to say, we don't want every man to go out with a sword. Those tribes who said, we want the people capable of doing the, of, of fighting. Those were more successful tribes ultimately. Um, yes. And if you look at some of the, I mean, um, for the life of me, I, I, I guess it's Norse, um, you know, the Valkyries, were, you know, women who women who went over the battlefield and said, well, you seemed, you know, pretty impressive. So did you. But new Valkyries were chosen from shield maidens mm -hmm. who who distinguished themselves in battle. You, you know, and you had Romans who would, you know, who were battling these people where they, they were actual, you know, there were women on the battlefield and Romans were like, well, I'm not going to stab a woman. That's ridiculous. You know, and then they get stabbed, hopefully. Right, I know. It's like, perfect, let your guard down. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great ploy at the very least. Um, but I think that those those cultures that were capable of saying, you know, it's not 
a physical sex. It's not a it's not a gender that defines what it is you're capable of doing. It's what you do. Um, have a better evolutionary advantage, a better chance of surviving. I have a commentary I could make on Western society. I'm not sure that I want to go into it. I, did did that correlate, or you know, did, does that does that you know? Do you agree with that? Is that what are your thoughts? I, yes, I absolutely agree with that. And you know, I I live in a um, sort of quite a traditional country where I can see that uh, gender roles are pretty well established. Mm-hmm. And you know, seeing this every day, I can also see how this it doesn't work. It doesn't work long term, mm-hmm. and it's absolutely logical to adapt to situations. And that's how the human race got to the point that it is today. I mean, the good point, not the bad one. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> like the good part of our evolution, because it was so adaptable to whatever came their way. Like if you need women in battle, you're taking women in battle. It's sure. If you need men who uh, have to develop people skills and soft skills, that's what they will have to do. And that's what they have to do now in order to adapt to society. Uh, And yes, it's absolutely, it is gender roles. Okay, they might have worked for a while. But whatever roles we have, if we cannot leave them behind us when they are no longer necessary, they're just a burden on our evolution. Right. Very well said. You you made a point earlier as well that I think helps I think it helps explain part of what you're saying. The we were talking about um, about being yourself, and there was a, a a comment you made. You said, "But you know, how do you how do you do that? How do you how do you find who that person is?" And we moved on from it. But um, I mean, I, I want to ask you that question: how How do we how do we find who we are? Oh, well. <laughs> um... By living and um, actually wondering every day, not who am I, but what gives me pleasure? Mm -hmm. In what situations do I feel relaxed? And in what situations do I feel like I need to perform rather than just because, you know, relaxing is who I am. When I'm at home alone and I'm relaxing, then I'm not dressed in anything fancy. I'm not wearing makeup. So that's definitely who I am, like the physical part of me. But then maybe you have situations where you need to perform, but you're enjoying that. That's also who you are. It's also part of your your identity, even though it might be formed by society or by what your parents requested of you to always be this this is me look at me i'm doing so well (laughs) (laughs) you might actually be enjoying that while it's happening especially if it's working out well and it's not something you should run away from just because like this uh, didn't come with the original package (laughs) that i developed it uh, further on so Whatever brings you joy, whatever makes you happy, and whatever makes you relaxed, that's part of who you are. Mm -hmm. So I would say it should be a constant practice of finding what you like. And I don't mean it like, um, you know, I really enjoy eating, so (laughs) maybe I should look into that. (laughs) Sure. I love kicking puppies. I, right. I mean, there's a certain yeah. level. Yes, I mean, that you don't you, go to, but yeah, uh, whatever is not against the law, right. you can look into that. 
<laughs> and whatever is not hurting yourself because you know you could like drugs well okay <laughs> good point probably everybody likes them but that's just a form of escapism from mm -hmm. being hurt because you are not you're not living in your truth you're not um, you're not finding your joy in your day-to-day -day lives. You, you have to find it in something else that, you know, takes you to a different reality. Right, right. You, you, you mentioned, um, I'm going to bring this back actually to your article, because you, you had mentioned um, the ability to, when you're sitting at home and you're relaxed, that is who you are. And there was one line in, in your article, and then all the women wanted to be lesbians, where you, you got there and you looked around and you saw the level of comfort and you used the words conventionally pretty. Mm -hmm. I think that's a glimmer. It was, it was, in, that was, I don't know where to go with that. Other, when you were talking about being relaxed and you got to this, this pajama pride party and you went, hmm. I'm not. I came here trying to be conventionally pretty. And, and yes. was yes. that not being who you were? Well, a part of who you are is also what we discussed earlier, that it's one of our basic needs to be part mm. of society, to be part of a tribe. And yeah, that's also part of who we are. We just have to see which part matches how we interact with society and which part matches with us, with being, being relaxed at home. Because, right. you know, I could have left uh, my home with, um, I don't know, no makeup on or actually in some old pajamas or something and just not feel good. And it's not that you don't feel good with who you are. It's absolutely natural for all of us to want to look good. That's why we're trying so hard to get that. Sure. And, and, and be integrated in society this way. So not, not everything that, that uh, is part of being conventional and not everything that is uh, being part of, of what others expect us to be, not all that is fake. Cats I agree. Say something. Um, oh, the cat! Oh. <laughs> yes. Bring him on screen. It's okay. I can't. Yeah, she's behind and moving. <laughs> or she's <there>. okay. <laughs> it will be great if if this if the the you know the camera moves or something. She's rubbing up against it. It'll be great. Yeah, yeah that's what she, um, that's what she was doing. So, see? like it's always look. See, that's her. <laughs> see it. <laughs> That's awesome. There she goes. Oh, there, there she go. is. Hi, kitty. Oh, my gosh. Beautiful cat. Mm -hmm. Oh, hi, kitty. <laughs> so I'd say uh, there's, we always have to find a balance between who we are at home and who we are mm -hmm. in public. Sure. Of course, we could go the crazy route and just go out of the house not bathing and <laughs> sure it, it's a negotiation i yes. mean I, it, it ends up being this negotiation a level of safety that, yes. that you're willing to accept it's, or, it's always a negoci negotiation yeah. and also you can be whoever you are but if at some point you are you know, infringing of, on the rights of society and they're feeling good around you. <laughs> Maybe you want to cut down on who you are a little bit. Like, oh, right. If Scale you want to go out bit. and yeah. kick puppies, please stay home. Really. Just... <laughs> of course. Um, there, is, there is one last one last thing I wanted to, to bring up because... Um, There is, so in, I don't know if you knew this, I am transgender. Of course you did, but you know, 
I, I love do. saying that. Yeah, I know. But I love saying that because then people go, no, I would never have guessed. And, and nobody <laughs> has yet, which I'm like, fuck, really? Anyway, um, my point was going to be that uh, I think that in the transgender community, it's just in general, the LGBTQ community, there is we are for we are forced because we look at social expectations and we go, ooh, no, I can't fulfill that. And so we are forced at looking at these expectations more closely and and really investigating them and thinking, you know, do these make sense? Do they, you know, because obviously for me, ultimately, after 52 years, there was enough pressure that I said, I, you know, I can't do it. I, it's either I grow my hair out and dye it purple or I, or I die. I mean, ultimately was the decision not really about the hair. I mean, it was about more, but you know, I think you got my point. Yes. Um, it ended up becoming a matter of survival. And, mm -hmm. and when we look, when we think about, um, particularly the, the survival of a tribe, it needs the survival of all members. And so I guess my, the, the point I was trying to make here is just that it's when we don't challenge social expectations, when we don't challenge sex or sexuality or gender, then, then there can be no negotiation. And I was forced into this role. I, I did not choose. And nobody believed me. There was nobody in the rainbow community who goes, oh, yeah, this is totally easy. I mean, you said earlier you can't just choose to be a lesbian, at least in part because nobody likes the, the rainbow community. You can't you don't just go. There's no gay man who goes, oh, it's perfectly easy. No problem. There's no transgender woman who goes, yeah, this is totally easy. No problem. Um, but we need those people who challenge the social expectations, who think about them and challenge them. Um, I felt like I had a question that I was going to ask, but it's somewhere lost off on the side, probably thinking about kicking puppies. <laughs> but... <laughs> uh, the thing is that I totally get what you're saying. And well, I was saying my part in the back of my mind, I was thinking about this, like about mm -hmm. what you said later, uh, because, okay, I want to be myself and I want to go out in society and I want society to see me for who I am, but society might be bothered by this. Well, okay, <laughs> it can be as bothered as it wants to be and I can choose what to do with that. Mm -hmm. Like keep back or keep pushing but unless society is truly hurt by what i'm doing it's being bothered it's really seriously who gives a flying fuck there's no value right yeah and that's the the point where each of us has to decide for ourselves Am I going to do this and push mm -hmm. through and go further, knowing that they don't like it? Or am I going to retreat into myself and just feel the way I feel and only I know it? Right. And, and we are so much less... What's the word I want to use? There is so much less reward to society when we only play social roles. You know, um, I think there, will, there have always been and will always be people who push uh, the barriers of society like they are at whatever point in history and they push them further. Mm -hmm. We need people who do this and there are people who do this. And it's great that this is happening. And there will always be pushback from society saying, no, we don't work this way. But right. if those people keep going, no, we will work that way. Because those people 
also have a right to be part of society and also have a right to be seen. Right. But unfortunately, they have to fight sometimes alone. And sometimes, because because one person dares to fight alone but still go out, others will see them and join. Yeah, yeah. And that's the power of going out and showing yourself to the world as you are or as you are at that moment. Yeah. Others yeah. join you because there will be others like you. I I like I like that message. I've I've said in a couple of places that that society is not everybody who's not you. <clears throat> yeah, just just the people who put pressure on on you. Society yeah. is you. Society is me. And if we believe a certain thing, then society must believe in those things, you know. Mm -hmm. And and we we affect society. So I I think it's a I think it's a beautiful message. Um, I will just say, I mean, thank you so much. These, I love being, I don't want to use the word validated. I, I love hearing perspectives because I mean, I'm coming from Western, I mean, I'm coming from like, you know, Southern California and, and if somebody goes, you know, you're coming you from like, the place where I want to be. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's right. I forgot. <laughs> that's right. We had that conversation. Yeah, L.A. Oof. We did, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. No. But, you, but, like, if you come from Los Angeles and you go, oh, I think it's important, you know, to, to be who you are, people go, oh, yeah, well, but you're like a California person. And, and uh, you know, like, it makes perfect sense. You're like one of those weird, you know, hippie, you know, we don't, this is why we want California to go get its own, you know, country can go, can go get its own country. <laughs> and I don't even live there anymore. Now, like now we live in Colorado. So it's, you know, it's like, it makes no sense, but, but, but I grew up there. And so, it, you know, there's this perception that, well, you grew up in LA, so you're going to be weird anyway. But I I love hearing. Um, I mean, you're shaking your head. No, no, which is good. It, it's not validation, but I appreciate hearing you know other people say, well, no, this is how we, you know, persist. This is how we perpetuate the species. You know, ultimately by knowing who we are and by expressing who we are. And and uh, I gave you some words, but you know, it, it, it's it's kind of what I heard too. Well, the thing is, uh, calling it validation, it feels, although that's not the meaning of the word, but it feels to me like I would be saying it's just so that you feel good. <laughs> but it's not like that at all. Because yeah. unless, no, unless no, there no. are people yeah. who promote these values, this would end before the general uh, population extinction. Because it's yes. just, we need to, to, to constantly adapt to new rules of being human. Mm -hmm. And there are some people who do that before others, and they don't have an easy path. But they are the ones who support the human race, not the guys who keep okay no no uh, let's uh, let's keep it safe uh, let's uh, that's right no that's not how it works that's not what brought us here i stand with you <laughs> so and i, I have stand seen, too close don't worry and i have seen no weird people in los angeles they just seemed like people Oh, I haven't been there enough to, I, yeah. I don't think I know weird people in general. Maybe I just don't think anybody's really weird. No, that, that hit me. I'm sorry. I, <laughs> when you said I just saw people, I went, Ooh, <laughs> I mean, so, so perfect. So you are right. And <laughs> 
I, cause like for a moment I went, gosh, I've been this whole, this whole, like everything I do, I try to say, Hey, everybody's people. Right. And then what's the thing okay. I do? I, st I start, I know, but I'm making fun of people in Los Angeles and you go, I don't know, everybody's people. And I went, there's a phrase for this it was hoisted, hoisted by my own petard, hoisted on my own petard. I don't, I can't think of how the phrase goes, but I just, Oh, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> you weren't making fun of them at all. And maybe if you come from there, you're allowed. Like, <laughs> maybe a little. <laughs> but maybe we're allowed to make fun of our own people, but not of, of our own. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, that's it. That's, that's okay. It. Right. Yeah. But nobody else, nobody else has the. Exactly. Nobody you make else. fun has of them. That's them. not that's right. right. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, so Mona, I'm, so I'm going to say thank you for, you know, I thought of a great way of saying thank you to you because you used the phrase, um, the, the, uh, give a flying fuck. And then, I said that already. You did. <laughs> yeah. Only once, but, but I love that phrase. It always cracks me up. And so I just want to say, you know, from the bottom of my little purple heart, thank you for giving the flying fuck that we all need. <laughs> well, Beautiful. Uh, uh, thank you for um, inviting me and my flying fuck that was given tonight. Uh, <laughs> I think I might have st stolen this from Eric Cartman or somebody like him. Yeah. I originally read that, I believe it was in a Stephen King book. He used the phrase, give a flying fuck at a rolling donut. Really? <laughs> I, I didn't know about the rolling donut one. Yeah. The second half of that, because cause then I had to ponder it. It was... Because, <laughs> like, donuts don't even roll that well. Right? I mean, like, you could be at the top of a hill, probably, and let the thing go, you know, go maybe four feet or something and you top it over. You tried that, didn't you? No. <laughs> Now I'll have to try it. <laughs> so you've rolled the donut, okay? You're like, well, the donut's rolling. That thing's going down the hill, whatever. Yeah. And you now you have to figure... I think it but could now be you have to... fun. <laughs> so then, but see, like, a flying fuck made sense until I was like, oh, well, wait, is that supposed to imply that I personally am flying? <laughs> and here's a donut. Because, like, what if you had, like, you know... What if you had like a filled donut? You have like a, you know, uh huh, right? Like a well, jelly. Be, no, because those filled ones, because they're not, uh, you, they're not filled all over. Like they're just injected with cream from place to place. Yes, that's what so I'm saying. The injected here, ones. It would be like <laughs> they'd roll better. <laughs> <laughs> But if the point is supposed to be that you've got somebody who is actually floating through space. Right. Trying, you know, I don't know. <laughs> and maybe that, maybe that is why Stephen King used it. But the whole phrase made no sense. And <laughs> that being said, <laughs> thank you for going along with me on it. You know, it was a good... There's no chance I'm cutting that part out, just so you know. <laughs> I didn't realize I was saying it. I say it all the time. And, no, it's uh, funny. <laughs> I find it funny. A lot of people don't find it funny on women. And uh, yeah. <laughs> that's their problem. Yeah, one of these days, you know, society will be fine with the phrase. And only because you you brought it, you made it uh, cool. I think is what it is. I hope so. No, I know it. I I hope this could be one day traced back to me, not to Stephen King. Uh, <laughs> and um, yeah, <laughs> I've been this awesome person who made a flying fuck famous for women. Yes, right. <laughs> Exclusively, famous, fa the famous flying fuck. I think that's that's going to be your legacy. <laughs> oh, great. My parents are going to be so proud. 
<laughs> I know. Mine too. Mine too. Or, you know, they'll see this show and go, God, I wish she'd quit saying that word. <laughs> it's untrue because neither of our parents is even going to watch this, right? Like my no. parents and Noah's, no, I'm not watching what you made. So anyway, let me, I'll cut it back. To, I'll bring it back down. Thank you so much, Mona, for being on the show. Thank and you for too. everything you do. Thank you. Thank you so much, too. I had so much fun. <laughs> Good. Because, <laughs> yeah, if it weren't fun. If you, you know what, though? Here's the thing. If we got to the end and I said, hey, thank you. And you went, yeah, anyway, look, I got to go get a cup of coffee. This was <laughs> horrid. Oh, my gosh. You do this? Wow. No wonder you have no audience. I would have thought, I'm well, I'm just going to cut that I'm absolutely sure nobody has ever said that to you. Um, you're, I mean, you're right, but I don't have a comeback. Okay. <laughs> you don't need a comeback. <laughs> <laughs> but my point, had you said that, I just would have cut it out. Like, who cares? I'm not going to let that go. You know, that's not going to be public. Just let it go. So <laughs> anyway. No, 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 I had fun. I enjoyed it. This is the way every show ends, by the way. So it starts with, like I say, I say thank you, and then it turns into like the funny bit of the show. You know, <laughs> everything else is serious, and then you get to the end, and then it turns into like the funny bit, and then people, I think people just fast forward. I'll make 10 bucks as they do. They go, let me just get to the funny bit. Where's the show? Okay, here we go. Here's the show closing. Oh, it's uh, funny. fast forward over a lot of things because it's TikTok era and um, <laughs> right. their attention span is five seconds. Yes, right. <laughs> but, you, but you invested a lot of time in me. And so for that, thank you again. Thank you, too. <laughs>